I call them horses, Poseidon shouted. They are fast and strong. You can ride them anywhere. They carry heavy stuff, pull plows or wagons. You can even ride them into war and trample your enemies. Plus, they just look really cool. The mortals murmured and clapped politely. Horses were obviously a valuable gift, though a few of the town people looked disappointed, like maybe they'd been hoping for pet jellyfish. Everyone turned to Athena. The goddess raised her hand. A sickly-looking shrub broke through the nearby rocks. It had gray-green leaves and green knobby fruits the size of warts. Poseidon couldn't help laughing. What's the spume is that? It's an olive tree, Athena said. The mortal shifted uneasily. The olive tree didn't look very impressive, but nobody wanted to say that to Athena. Poseidon chuckled. Okay, well, nice try. I guess we know who won this contest. Not so fast, Athena said. The olive tree may not look like much, but you can grow it with very little effort. It will spread across the countryside until olives are the most important food in Greece. Those knobby black things, Poseidon protested, they're tiny. But they will grow by the thousands, Athena said, and they're tasty on pizza. The mortals of this city will export olives across the world and become rich. You can use olive oil for cooking and lighting lamps. You can even add perfume to the oil and use it for bathing, or moisturizing, or cleaning those hard-to-get stains out of your kitchen counters. She turned to the crowd of mortals. How much would you pay for it now? But don't answer. It's my gift to you, free of charge. And if you order today... You'll also get my patronage for your city, which includes tons of wisdom, advice about warfare, and all sorts of helpful crafts. You'll be the richest and most important city in Greece. All that I ask is you name your city after me and build me a temple, which can be done in three easy installations. Poseidon's confidence started to crumble. But wait, my horses! The mortals were no longer listening. They were much more interested in making money, and while the countryside around their city was great for growing olives, it was too hilly and rocky for horses to be of much use. It was kind of ironic. The people of the city would eventually become famous as sea traders, exporting the olive oil, but they turned down the sea god Poseidon's patronage. He might have done better if he'd offer them trained whales. So Athena won the contest, and that's why it's named Athens after her, when it could have been named something cool like Poseidonopolis. Poseidon stormed off, literally. He forgot his promise not to take revenge and almost destroyed the lower part of the city with a huge flood, until finally the Athenians agreed to build a temple on the Acropolis, honoring both Athena and Poseidon. The temple's still there. If you go, you can see the marks left by Poseidon's trident where he struck the rock to make the saltwater spring. There are probably still olive trees around too, but I doubt you'll see any horses. After that, Poseidon got a little obsessed with finding a city to sponsor, but he didn't have any luck. He fought with Hera over the city of Argos, Hera won. He fought with Zeus for the island of Aegina, Zeus won. He fought with Helios for the city of Corinth, and almost won, but Zeus said, no, you guys split it. Helios, you can have the main city and the Acropolis. Poseidon, you see that little skimpy strip of land next to the city? You can have that. Poseidon just kept getting shafted or lightning bolted, or olive treed. The more times it happened, the crankier he got. This was bad, because when Poseidon got touchy, he was more likely to punish whoever he thought was insulting him. For instance, he was very proud of those fifty sea spirits called the, the Nereids, whose beauty was known throughout the world. They had long, flowing hair as dark as midnight, sea-green eyes, and gossamer white dresses that billowed around them in the water. Everyone knew they were absolute knockouts, and having them in his domain was something that delighted Poseidon, kind of like living in town with championship football team. Anyway, this mortal queen named Cassiopeia, down in North Africa, she started bragging about how she was way more beautiful than the Nereids. Poseidon had no patience for that nonsense. He summoned up a flesh-eating, blood-drinking sea serpent about a thousand feet long, with a mouth that could swallow a mountain, and he sent it to terrorize the coast of Africa. The monster raged up and down, devouring ships, making waves that sank villages, and bellowing so loudly no one could get any sleep. <laughs>